Hello friends, my name is Ashish Ruthar with student ID 3300849678467. My topic for research paper is the future of renewable energy production and storage based on nanotechnology, which is a part of subject ELG7132, topics in electronics 1, nanoelectronics. Here is the outline of today's presentation. Starting with the introduction, it will be followed by what is nanotechnology, renewable energy and nanotechnology, nanotechnology in solar energy, nanotechnology in geothermal energy, as well as nanotechnology in other renewable energy. We will also discuss renewable energy storage using nanotechnology as well as economical overview of nanotechnology in energy sector. And in the last conclusion, let's start with the introduction. Nanotechnology is the manipulation of matter on an atomic and molecular scale. Generally, nanotechnology works with material devices and other structures with at least one dimension size from 1 to 100 nanometer. Nanoscience and nanotechnology can be used across small things and can be used across all other science fields such as chemistry, physics, material science and engineering. At present stage, the non-renewable sources are most prominent used for satisfying the world's energy demand. Here we can clearly see in the picture that majority of the total energy is generated by oil which is followed by coal, gas, renewable and nuclear. 13% of the total energy is generated by renewable energy sources out of which 10% of energy is generated by biomass. The other energy sources like wind, solar and geothermal they all together generate 0.5% of the total renewable energy in which geothermal generate the majority of the total energy. However, these resources are expected to extend or non-harvestable by the end of the year 2100. This will result in the requirement unconventional sources of energy. Using the present technology, it will be impossible to harness the energy to satisfy world's energy demand. So, there is a great need for improvement of present technology using nanomaterials. Now let's talk about what is nanotechnology. Basically, the branch of technology that deals with dimensions and tolerance of less than 100 nanometers, especially the manipulation of individual atoms and molecules, that is called nanotechnology. One nanometer refers to one billionth of a meter. There are certain things which are included in nanotechnology such as they are small in size, which may be less than hundreds of nanometer. They have some uh, unique properties because of the smaller size. They also have some controls of structure and composition on the nanometer scale in order to control the properties of a material. Let's see scalar diagram, starting with the micro scale, in which human eye can see directly the different materials. It is followed by micro scale. Hair and a cell are also part of this micro scale which uh, human eye can't see directly for that a microscope require in nanoscale virus and a human dna is a part of this scale which are bigger than atoms and at last in atomic scale atoms of part is this scale nanotechnology is widely used in whole world it has some different properties such as they are faster they are lighter they are very cheaper as well as they can also fit in different small species they are very energy efficient and also they can develop uh, unique properties at smaller scale nanotechnology has different structures called carbon nanotubes and buckyballs because of this structure they can use in various applications now let's see the relation between renewable energy and nanotechnology nanotechnologies provide the potential to enhance energy efficiency across all branches of industry and to economically leverage renewable energy production through new technological solutions and optimized production technologies. Nanotechnology innovations could impact each part of the value added chain in the energy sector. The chain in the energy sector started with the energy sources which is followed by energy change, energy distribution, energy storage and energy uses. In the field of energy sources there are different energy sources such as solar cells, wind, geothermal and biomass. The generated energy is converted into electrical energy in the field of energy change. This generated electrical energy is distributed through power transmission or smart grid, which is called an energy distribution sector. 
this distributed energy is stored in a different ways such as electrical energy stored in batteries and chemical energy stored in fuel cells this stored energy is used in different ways such as lightning air conditioning and thermal insulations which is part of energy uses there are different applications of nanotechnology in renewable energy sectors such as wind energy geothermal energy hydrogen energy photovoltaic cells which is also called as solar cells now let's talk deeper through nanotechnology in solar energy the three critical properties that photovoltaics must have to be effective are transparency conductivity and catalytic activity the research and development of solar cells using nanotechnology is probably the most promising for alternative energy production classic nanostructures such as carbon nanotube fluorescence and quantum dots are being used to make solar cells lighter cheaper and more efficient as you can see directly in the picture that nanomaterials cause more electrons to be released when hit by a photon of light additionally structure properties of photovoltaics can be modified using nanotechnology in this slide we will discuss about how solar energy is generated from nanomaterials starting with the nano size particle in solar cell bulk silicon is converted into nano size particles these particles will show distinct colors depending upon their sizes for an example films of 1 nanometer shows blue fluorescent and films of 2.85 nanometer shows red fluorescent they produce large voltage enhancement with improved power performance apart from that carbon nanotube which is made of titanium oxide is also used to generate solar energy it provides a direct route for electrons towards the electrodes in the picture we can directly see that a red line which shows the path of electrons using this kind of material the efficiency of uh, solar panel is improved now let's talk about then another nano material which is semiconductor quantum dot which is nothing but the tiny semiconductor crystal it has a potential to convert the high energy photons present in the incident light into multiple electrons the concept behind that is nothing but when a photon of sunlight hits a semiconductor dot it will produce uh, three electrons so by generating multiple electrons uh, it can produce more solar energy as compared to the silicon solar cell we started with the two kilometer long roll of aluminium next we use ink printer to print on these on roll which transforms sigma form then metal is wrapped for conductivity semiconductor fingerprint is processed then sheets are cut individual as per the measurement as per the requirement cells are combined together to make a panel the heart of any solar panel is utility panel which is designed at utility scale which can operate at 1500 volts which is used for high voltage power plants which is efficient is about 10 to 12% and it has a life span of 25 years now let's talk about the second renewable energy source which is geothermal energy new nanotech materials which make geothermal power more practical energy source geothermal power is renewable energy and produces almost no pollution in conventional geothermal power production hot rock needs to heat water to 300 degree fahrenheit or more hotter that rock may be found at 5000 feet inside the ground and at very few places over here nano materials may help to make geothermal more efficient Uh, energy production which is closer to the surface at lower temperatures metal organic heat carriers are nano materials 1000 the width of the human hair of which some could absorb 13% of their weight in organic compounds in geothermal power system these could help drive turbines with organic compounds at lower temperatures in this slide let's talk about the energy generation from hydrogen nanotechnology will of a different advances in hydrogen energy production storage and distribution splitting water with light could get rid of the reliance on fossil fuels and other hydrocarbons 
hydrogen can be produced from renewable energies and consequently converted into electricity mainly using fuel cell technology for these reasons hydrogen like biofuel can be considered as an energetic vector and therefore the core of energy economy on its own as we can see in the figure hydrogen is that the only product of its combustion is water consequently by combining both the production of hydrogen from renewable energies with it with its use in fuel cells a new pathway emerges leading to a fully environment friendly energy system with the subsequent reduction in carbon emission and dependency on fossil fuels now let's talk about some other renewable energy sources such as wind energy in wind energy the kinetic energy is converted into mechanical energy and further it will be converted into electrical energy and this is how electricity is generated there are certain advantages of using nanotechnology in wind energies nano composite materials with excellent strength to weight and stiffness to weight ratios enable construction of longer more plates low friction coating and nano lubricants provide means to reduce energy losses in gearbox and this is how energy efficiency is improved to improve the lifespan of uh, wind turbine and wind blades the coating is done by nano paints to make uh, blades stronger and lighter carbon nanotubes are used now let's talk about some of the interesting part of this discussion which is renewable energy storage using nanotechnology nanotechnology will offer a different advances in hydrogen energy production storage and distribution over here one of the most exciting areas for nanotechnology to impact hydrogen energy is efficient hydrogen storage there is currently no viable technology to store large volume of hydrogen fuel because of its either too bulky or expensive researchers have developed nanoblades that are extremely thin uniform and high surface areas also that fluorescence can hold a large volume of hydrogen which is equivalent to density of hydrogen at the center of jupiter the efficiency of hydrogen transport could be further enhanced by use of carbon nanotubes wiring in place of traditional pipelines these lines would have increased strength conductivity and stability at high temperatures and this is how uh, the renewable energy storage is done using nanotechnology in this slide we are going to discuss about economical overview of nanotechnology in energy sector the first picture shows the nanotechnology and grid jobs over the selected era for the worldwide and to be forecasted for the upcoming years in the second picture it shows the benefits of global market estimates and the different issues related to nanotechnology applications which includes nano solar cells energy storage nano generators thermal energy fuel catalyst water treatment and reuse of the water apart from these out of these applications thermal energy has the vast and the bigger market over the worldwide and each application has some issues and challenges which are going to be solved in upcoming years from all of this discussion we can conclude that the use of nanomaterials in the renewable energy field can play a crucial role in increasing the efficiency of solar cell fuel cell and wind turbine apart from that pv solar cells are increasing their efficiency while reducing their manufacturing and energy production cost at unpredictable rate hydrogen production storage and transformation into electricity in fuel cells are being benefited from more efficient catalysts for water splitting better nanostructures materials for high higher hydrogen absorption capacity and cheaper simpler fuel cells though the nanotech products are expensive they increase the performance efficiency of the power generation unit uh, tremendously apart from this life of parts of the power generation units will be increased and maintenance of the power generation units can be minimized thank you